AI isn't the future of research. It's actually the present. And if you're not using it yet, you are already a step behind. The academic game already had you pressed with the publish or perish mindset, but now that AI is showing up in labs, libraries, and laptops across the globe, that pressure just doubled. And right now, there's a quiet divide forming in academia. On one side, we have students, researchers, and academics still trying to do everything the traditional way, burning out under the weight of outdated methods. But on the other side are those who figured out how to let AI handle the grunt work so that they can focus on thinking deeper, writing stronger, and staying consistent. And that gap is only getting wider. The shift is showing up everywhere. Oxford University Press surveyed over 2,000 researchers and 76% said they're already using AI tools as a part of their research process. And Nature, the world's leading scientific journal, also reported a consistent rise in AI-related terms across research papers in every field over the last decade. This isn't just a trend, it's a transformation. And everyone from students to seasoned faculty are turning to AI to help with everything from idea generation to literature reviews, outlining, translation, and editing. What used to take hours now can take minutes, and that time can be redirected into deeper thinking, better writing, and more polished work. This is especially relevant in medicine, where the pressure to produce research starts early. Whether you're applying for medical school, residency, fellowship, or just trying to move up in academic medicine, research output is a key factor. Your research is the currency that buys you credibility. But most of us are out here juggling clinical responsibilities, studying family bills, and still somehow expected to produce like we're full-time researchers with a 10% team. Well, that's where AI becomes more than just helpful, it becomes that team. It's not about replacing your work, it's about helping you manage the workload more effectively. Cornell University captured this well in a recent report, noting that even when researchers are fully capable of doing a task, AI can often produce the same output in a fraction of the time. Now, that doesn't mean that the human role disappears, it just means that our focus shifts. Less time spent formatting citations or summarizing dense PDFs, and more time shaping our arguments, refining our analysis, and engaging critically with the material. It's about using our energy where it counts most. At this point, it's clear that AI isn't just a trend, it's becoming a core part of how serious academic work gets done. But the question that most of us have is, how do we actually use this in a way that respects the integrity of our work while still saving time and allowing us to make progress? Well, let me introduce you to Ginny AI, which has become a game changer for students and researchers. Full disclosure, Ginny AI is sponsoring this video, but after using it, I was so ecstatic to share it. It's actually so game changing that I probably would have made this video regardless of if they were sponsoring it or not. Ginny AI is at the forefront of ethical AI usage in academia. It's built specifically for academic writing, research papers, essays, your thesis, all of the structured work that needs citations, clarity, and consistency. The entire platform is focused on helping you move through the writing process without getting stuck in the usual places. You're still in control of your ideas, your analysis, and your arguments, but Ginny helps you organize, clarify, and actually get it down on the page. And what I really appreciate is that it's not trying to think for you. It's not going to write your paper with some generic voice or fill in content that you haven't thought through. Instead, it works with you. You bring the vision, the topic, the angle you want to take, and Ginny helps build around that, helping you shape your structure, expand your points, and stay on track. So to give you a better sense of how this actually works, I'm going to walk you through a real example. I'll show you how I use Ginny AI from start to finish, how I take a topic, build an outline, develop the content, and manage sources all along the way. So this is Ginny AI, and the first thing that I like to do is start with a prompt. So when you click this, it opens up this panel, and this allows you to ask Ginny a research question, and then Ginny will help you with formulating this into something that is actually presentable. So for the sake of example, let's ask Ginny to help perform a literature review on the impact of artificial intelligence on academic writing in the field of medicine. And you can see here, this is telling me that this is a great prompt. And if you don't have as many keywords or if Ginny isn't able to get a good understanding of what you're asking for, it will prompt you here to improve the quality of your prompt. So it looks like we have a good prompt here. And then what I like to do is I use the standard he uh, heading, which is the standard intro, methods, results, discussion. But you can also do creative headings here, which would actually generate subheadings within these based on the specifics of your document. For the sake of example, let's just do the standard heading here, and then we will start writing. So as you can see, I have a title, and then I have all of this, the standard headings based off of what a normal academic paper looks like. And the first thing that you can see is in this grayed out session section here, it's basically helping me to start writing. And so in the introduction section, it's already starting to think about ways that I can start this introduction. 
And so this has said, the integration of artificial intelligence and academic writing is revolutionizing how medical research is conducted and disseminated, presenting both opportunities and challenges for scholars and practitioners. And so this is already just trying to use information that it's gained from reviewing the literature to get me going writing. And so what I can do is then I can just click accept if I like this, as you can see here, and then it will continue to prompt different types of writing. And so if I don't like, for example, this next sentence, which is AI's capacity to process and analyze vast amounts of data is particularly relevant in medicine, a field characterized by an ever expanding body of literature and complex data sets. If I don't like that, then I can just try again. I can click the try again button. And you can see very quickly, it gives me another example. But one thing that's nice is that let's say that I just want to start writing myself, but I get blocked. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all of that and I'm going to just start writing. So I'm just going to write artificial intelligence. And let's say I pause for a second as I'm thinking and I don't know where I'm going literally just a half a second pause and it already is prompting something that I could continue to write with. You can see artificial intelligence is rapidly changing various facets of modern life and academic writing in medicine is no exception. And so again, this is prompting different ways of finishing sentences that I even start. And so this can, you know, start sentences on its own or it can finish sentences that you begin. Now, if you don't like this part of this and you just want to be able to write things yourself, super easy. All you do is go to this settings here and this is the auto complete function and so when you turn this off now auto complete is disabled and i can write on my own so artificial intelligence is changing how medical practitioners are conducting research as you can see it didn't give me any suggestions it is allowing me to write what i feel like writing without any uh in intervening and in guiding my thoughts if i don't want the ai to guide my thoughts now even when this is turned off you can still actually prompt it to give you suggestions without doing it automatically by just pressing command and the backslash. And so you can see I pressed the command backslash and then it just prompted the AI suggestion. And so a lot of times what's beneficial is just to have this off, start writing, and then when you feel like you get stuck, prompting this to give you a suggestion. Now the next thing that I want to show you is how Jenny can take something that is already written and in this case, I just allowed the autocomplete function to write a few sentences in this introduction, but how it can take this and adjust it how you would want it to be adjusted. And also briefly, we'll get back to this, but I want to show you just at least point out that references are already being captured. You can see one, two, three references are already being captured. And if I scroll down here, the references are presented at the bottom of this page, but we're going to get to that soon. What I want to show you now is if I were to highlight this, then I can do AI edit. And I could do things like improving fluency, paraphrase, simplify, strengthen arguments, all of those kind of things. Or I can actually have AI, I can create my own uh, instruction to AI to change this. So let's say that I want to paraphrase this paragraph with more of an argumentative tone. In medicine, everything is argumentative. Let's see what happens. So you can see here that it is showing me what it would replace my current text with in more of that argumentative tone. And you can see also that it is still citing references, which is incredibly helpful. And I can either replace that section or I can just add it below if I want to be able to have both paragraphs present. OK, so now let's talk about the citation capabilities of this resource. So I'm going to go back to highlighting all of this. And one thing that is amazing is this cite function right here. So I just clicked cite. And as you can see here, it's actually going to pull up a list of articles, tons and tons of articles that are related to whatever I have just highlighted. And so one thing that you can do that I love is you can, you don't have to just cite it blindly. It actually has links to these documents. And so let's say I'm going to go to view this document here and it's immediately bringing me to the document that it's trying to cite. And so if I don't want something that is not in PubMed or something like that, I can click it, recognize that it's not the type of document that I want, and I can go back and I can continue to kind of look through and see what else is available. And it is amazing. And let's say that I love this article here. This is in Curious, um, and I just want to add the citation here. All I do is add the citation. And you can see it is now added at the end of this document right here, right where the cursor was. And not only is it added in this paragraph, but it is added in my reference section. And so going through and finding references that are related to what you're writing and then being able to easily cite them directly in the text while keeping your reference section up to date. This is le legitimately saving hours and hours of time. 
But let's say that you have already done your own literature review and you just want to add the references that you've already identified that are relevant for the paper that you're writing. Well, this is incredibly easy as well. You just go over here to your library tab here and I can click here and you have a few options of how you can add the resources that you've already found into this document. One of those is just uploading the PDFs directly here. But one of the best things and probably easiest ways of doing this is to paste the, the DOI. And so let's say, for example, I've done a literature review and I'm finding references on PubMed. So here is a paper concerns surrounding application of AI and hip and knee arthroplasty. And I found this and one of my mentors, Dr. Cody Wiles, is on this paper and I want to cite this paper and the paper that I'm writing. So something that is incredibly easy is all I have to do is I just have to copy this DOI. And so what happens now is I can come in here, paste DOI here, and I'm going to search it. And you can see immediately pulls up concerns surrounding application of AI and hip and knee arthroplasty. This is the right one. It's in the bone and joint journal. This is exactly what I was looking for. So now I'm going to import this into my library. So it's added successfully to my library here. I'm going to come out here and you can see here it is. So let's say that I just want to add this citation at the end of this sentence here. All I do is click cite and you can see now I have five listed here and it is also listed here. And this is just an incredibly useful way if you've already done your literature review to go in, copy the DOI, takes five seconds and you can just create your library of references that you've already done and then cite them as you need to throughout your article. And you can also have, you can format this in, I think there's look, over 2,600 styles of formatting for your uh, bibliography and your reference section. And so you can format this however you want to, and it applies that formatting throughout your writing as well. So the way of being able to not only find sources, but also capture existing sources that you've already identified and just making that process this easy. This is like literally a cheat code in terms of saving you time. This is incredible. Okay. Now the last thing that I want to show you is this AI chat feature. This is just an opportunity for you to actually communicate with Jenny without actually writing or without influencing what is written and get more questions answered and get your thoughts out in more of a communicative way with Ginny to formulate things before putting it on paper. So let's just say for the sake of example, I want to ask Ginny, what are the biggest concerns right now using AI in academic research, particularly in the medical field? So you can see it has just produced a list of incredible resources, again, cited, documenting the biggest concerns related to using AI and academic research in the medical field. Transparency, explainability, resource from 2025, bias and fairness, another resource from 2025, that's the same one. Data privacy, so you know, seeing multiple resources to highlight this, this is definitely a resource that I'd be really interested in looking more into. And again, just hovering over this, I can immediately go and view this. And here it is, just from, I can easily see, is this what I'm looking for? And then add that citation if I want to. But you can see that I can actually have a conversation with Jenny to really help formulate my thoughts, obtain new and additional resources, and just really have a good understanding of where I'm trying to go with what I'm writing. And when I am done, I can just go up here to export, export this draft as a Word document, send it off to the rest of the team. And I have now taken a process that includes reviewing the literature, gathering resources and drafting a manuscript, something that would historically take days, if not weeks of time and condense that into a process that can probably be done in a few hours. Well, I hope that this video shows you just how powerful a tool Jenny AI is. This is something that still allows you to steer the ship. It just removes some of the pain points of writing. And the research is pretty clear that this is becoming more of a norm in academia. So today is the day to begin learning how AI can be used in your own research endeavors and really no better place to start than with Jenny AI. If you did enjoy this video, I bet that you would absolutely love this one where I share the ultimate med school survival guide. And as always, keep evolving and I'll see you guys in the next one.